All right, welcome back everyone. This is the Happy Toolbox. And today I'll be going over a procedural brick and mortar effect that I came up with after being really inspired by this beautiful post by the Untitled Army. Um, if you don't follow him, he does amazing artwork. And this may or may not be the way he did this, but when I looked at this, I just loved how it didn't look like a flat texture map. I loved that there was mortar spilling out unevenly between all of these different sized bricks. I love how it kind of circled all these different shapes into a heart shape at the bottom. So I wanted to figure out how to procedurally do this inside of Cinema 4D. So I'm gonna show you that setup. Let's hop on in. The first thing I wanna do is I wanna set up my bricks. So I'm going to grab a primitive cube and kind of size it down to a standard brick shape. This looks about good. And then let's just go ahead and pop it inside of a cloner object. So if you hold Alt or Option while you go over to MoGraph and click Cloner, it'll stack that object you have selected inside of a cloner so you don't have to drag it in. And then for Mode, I just right now I just want to make kind of a brick wall look so we can set this uh, mortar system up. So if I go to Grid Array, we have our grid. I'm going to go down to one count, but up. Let's do like four. Change this size. Oops. Make, let's do five this way. Scale it down. Try to have it somewhat even. Let's do 97 by 57. That gives us this little brick wall. Um, in my cube, I'm going to turn on the filet o fish settings down here. Um, just leave it like that for now. That's totally fine. And just a side note, you know, in this post, he has all these different shapes and sizes of uh, bricks in here. And the way you do that with cloner objects is the cloner object looks at any of these objects stacked under it as the ability to grab that as a clone. So right now it's thinking, okay, I'm going to make this four by five grid you want out of just this set of cubes. If I stack another one under here and let's say I change, you know, that to be a different shape, you can see a few of them got scattered to uh, be this different size brick. And as you keep going, etc., it'll keep doing that. So as you can see, it just starts using these shapes um, randomly throughout the cloner object, which is really nice. It kind of does it for you. I'm going to kind of stick with this standard cube for now and then we'll you know maybe throw some different shapes and sizes in here once we get it set up so there is our first kind of brick wall set up and from here let's just title this so we know um, we're gonna have quite a few cloner objects in here so let's title this bricks and then let's grab another cloner object just throw that in the scene call this mortar and then grab a sphere um, you can probably grab whatever geometry you want, and that's kind of the fun of this. Once we have it set up, you can throw whatever objects you want in there to see how the mortar reacts. But let's start with a sphere. I want this to be pretty low segments, um, so we don't have a lot of choking in the scene. So let's go down to eight. And then for radius, I want this pretty small. Let's throw this down to like six. So we want this really small uh, sphere that we can kind of scatter in between here. So I'm gonna drop that inside of the mortar cloner. And then on the cloner settings, what we wanna do is use this whole brick grid as what we scatter these clones onto. So instead of linear, I'm going to go down to object and you'll see there's this space where you can drag an object in. So that's where I'm going to drag my bricks cloner setup inside of that. And it's kind of going to go crazy. It's going to scatter these on top of the front faces, inside and out. Um, looks like a strange disease, but that's not what we want. Um, what we want is to scatter along the edges of each of these bricks. So the way I did that, there might be a better way to do this. So please, in the comments below, if you have uh, any ideas, I'm always open to updating my methods. I'm learning as I'm going as well. I actually went into my brick and into my cube and I stamped it down so that, I'm just gonna hide these and uncheck this, so that I could pull a selection tag for this. So if I hit UL, that will 
make a loop selection, and then I grabbed the loop on the outside of this object and went up to Select, Set Selection. So now I have this little selection tag. It's specifically selecting this outside loop of polys. I'm going to turn our brick wall back on. I'm going to turn our mortar back on. And in here, I'm going to leave the distribution on surface. I want it to scatter on the surface of these bricks, but I'm going to take this selection tag and pull that into our selection zone. And so you can see what kind of happened is it took all those ones on the faces off and just paid attention to that loop on the edge of the bricks. So in mortar, then I have this, this count number and I basically want to jack that up to about 800. So that's why it's important um, for your sphere to be pretty low poly. So maybe I might even knock this down to six just so it's even better. Uh, Cause the higher poly that sphere, obviously the slower your scene's gonna go. So then if you saw my dynamic snow scene set up, uh, Cinema 4D has these really powerful volume builder and volume measure tools. Uh, I think they started in R20, I believe. So if you have previous versions of that, you might not have these volume builders but I'm going to grab a volume builder and then stack my mortar under it. And you'll get this like really low res pixelated look going on here. And that is your voxel size. So basically the lower you make this voxel size, the kind of tighter and sharper these pixels here will become. So I'm gonna drop this to maybe like six, maybe five. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, this will be something you'll mess with depending on your setup. So just always, you know, go back to the voxel size if you're finding holes or anything like that. Um, and then volume builder always gets stacked inside of a volume mesher if you want geometry. So I'm going to stack that inside of there. And so there we have it. We have our base mortar and brick setup. Now from here, what I would do is I would also want to add another cloner object because as we saw in Untitled Army's post, they had all these little tiny pebbles kind of inside of the mortar. And obviously this is all stuff you can do with textures, which would probably be the smarter way to go here so your scene doesn't get crazy. I'm just a huge fan of geometry where I can get it. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a cloner object of little stones. Um, if you're using Octane or anything like that, uh, using a scatter object at the end would be really great as well. I'm not going to dive into rendering though. Um, this is basically just the procedural setup. If you're interested in rendering and seeing if I could get something close to this for the textures and materials, let me know in the comments below. So I'm going to take that cloner object. I'm going to make another sphere. I'm going to drop its radius down to about three segments. Again, we want this really low. So I'm going to drop it to six, potentially even lower. I'm going to call this stones. And then I'm going to change it to an object and this time pull our volume measure inside. And here surface works pretty well. I'm just gonna up the count number, like 500. So there we got a ton of stones. Honestly, I might do a lot more than that. Let's do a thousand. So now we have a thousand little of these stones scattered on the object's surface. And then I'm gonna go up to MoGraph, grab a random effector, and make sure and have my stones uh, cloner object selected. So it will immediately apply this random effector to that cloner. And you can see it kind of scatters into space. Uh, we obviously don't want that. What we want is if you go over to parameters, I'm gonna knock the positions down. Actually, I could have just turned it off. Duh. Um, I'm gonna select the scale, click uniform scale, and I'm gonna pop this up to like 0.5. So now you get some variation in the scale going on here. And then I'll go back to my sphere and I'm gonna set the radius down to like one. We want this really small because as you can see in the Untitled Armies post, it's, it's basically just like noise filler and you catch kind of a large one every once in a while. 
So something like that. Again, I might go back and jack this up even higher now that they're so small. Eh, 1200. That's feeling pretty good. So as you can see, we have this nice setup going on here. For the most part, it's avoiding the front surfaces of the bricks, which was really important. But we wanna make sure this can adapt to um, different shapes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this brick. Uh, turn everything off right now. So I can focus on this brick. And I'm going to make this a little bit of a different shape. Say something like that. So just slightly different than the other brick. And then I'm going to turn everything back on. And as you can see, I kind of push this pretty extreme. So there are gaps being formed because these bricks are non-uniform. But as you can see, what's really cool is, you know, I can update this and just does a really nice job of at least surrounding the brick. And then all you have to do to fix, you know, what you see here is reposition some of the size variants, um, change the size of your sphere. Just throw this up to maybe seven for now. So see, I just made the sphere a little bit larger and it started connecting the gaps. Um, I'm going to want to go over to bricks. Just let's knock this down a little bit. Our size. 55. Obviously the scene's pretty heavy since I have all these cloners going on. But I mean, it's still, I can still rotate around it fairly light. And then another thing you want to do is make sure and go over to volume builder. If you change your voxel size here. That's going to help out a ton. Just be wary, like the higher you change this voxel size, the more smooth it's going to become. So if I change this to like 12, it might fill it out nicely, but you're not going to have a lot of the bumps and crevices you had prior. Um, but as your geometry gets more and more extreme in these bricks, you might want to think about doing that. Let's keep ours at about eight. This. There we go. So I basically knocked all those variants down and I got it closer. Again, it's not like a perfect method. You're gonna have some holes here and there, but I think it's pretty, pretty awesome looking and gets you pretty close to this. You get, you know, really tight pinches in some areas. You know, you have a lot of uneven brick stacking here and uh, different sized objects and this system can definitely uh, take any of those different sized objects in. Now what I really liked about his piece was also kind of these moments where there was this kind of squashed mortar coming out of the center. And so what's really nice with this setup as well, since it's all based upon cloners, I can add to my uh, mortar cloner, I can add an effector that kind of pushes parts of it out. So I'm gonna put a plane effector in here. It's gonna go insane because it's not really gonna know what I want. It's kind of just pushing it out randomly. And what I want instead of transform space node, I'm going to change it to effector. And that way it's more uh, using the effector access for which direction I want to go in. I obviously don't want to go up. I want to go forward. You know, let's say I want to go forward like 10. Yeah, so it kind of looks like it's squeezing out a little bit. And then obviously I don't want this really uniformly over the whole thing. So what I would do is I would go over to fall off and you have fields here. And instead of linear field, you know, pick any of these, but let's say we grab a spherical field. And just right away, you can see what's happening. Maybe I'm going to drop this back a little bit, say five. Yeah, there we go. I'm going to just hide the spherical field. So you can see what's happening. But with that um, plane effector, I was able to kind of push some of this mortar forward 
in space where I wanted to. And what's really nice, you know, if you're doing a static render kind of like this, you could place a bunch of these deformers in really specific areas to get the look you're going after. Anyway, that is the basic setup. And like I said, as long as you um, duplicate from your bricks um, and kind of keep the same selection state that you have, this works really well. So again, if I so again, let's turn all this off and turn my bricks off and duplicate one of these again. And this time I'm going to add a bunch of cuts. Do like that. Couple this way. Go into my side view. Let's kind of make this the heart shape he has uh, down here. So I'm going to make this pretty janky right now and not focus too much on uh, the modeling technique. Obviously, there's weird pinches and stuff going on, but just want to show you how this works. So there we go. We have kind of a really janky looking heart. But it's keeping that same edge loop selection. So if I go in here and I turn our other bricks back on and I turn the rest of our objects on, now we have our heart bricks in there and it, the mortar just adapts accordingly. You know, you start getting a few deeper gaps, but again, I think that's what's cool about this. Um, it feels very uh, hand placed. All right, and that is pretty much it for this tutorial. Hopefully this helps you on a current or future project. If you'd like this video and subscribe to our channel, that would help us out a ton. And as always, if you're interested in any 3D models, head on over to thehappytoolbox.com. We have a ton of fairly priced, amazing 3D asset packs that we put a ton of love and time into. And we have a really great freebie section that we're continuously adding to. We just added these three new models like this fully sub D modeled basketball that was a nightmare for me to put together and I'm giving it away for free. Yep, I'm insane. I don't know. I don't know why we're doing this, but <laughs> go ahead and check these out. Grab some of them if you want, and I will see you next time. All right.